Hi everybody. Just wanted to give a little presentation about what online systems people used before the internet was popular. Now, back in the 1980s and 90s, before the internet was popular, people still used online systems, but back then they used online systems that were called bulletin board systems. Now, these online systems, what were they? They were, like I said, popular in the 1980s and 90s, before the internet was popular, and these served mainly the same purposes as the internet, such as distribution of files and software, message forms to talk about different topics with other people, and to find information, and playing online games with other people. Um, these systems were accessed over a telephone line via modems connected to a PC, and as you can see below, here's a picture of a typical modem people would use to connect to a bulletin board. Just a little box that would connect to your PC, and then you'd hook up the phone line to it. And when you dialed out, the the phone, the modem would typically dial the phone number, and then it would connect to the other modem with a series of high-pitched, you know, squeaky noises. And then after and after a few seconds, it would be connected. And um, most bulletin doors were text-based because that's how computers were back then. Graphical operating systems were not as common as they are today, so they were mainly text-based, but they did have color. Um, now there are several different types of bulletin board systems. Most of them were run as a hobby in people's homes on a regular computer. So this, someone would just set it up on their computer and then open it up to the public and then let people call in. Some were run by organizations such as schools, libraries, and companies to provide information about their company and products. And some bulletin boards were commercial for profit. Now, those type of bulletin boards were typically large systems that provided a number of games that you wouldn't typically find on other systems or some specialized systems that had things that you wouldn't normally find elsewhere. Um, some of those also were bigger systems like Prodigy, CompuServe, and AOL, which were the precursor to the internet type of service. Um, now, if you want, here I have a few screenshots of what a bulletin board looked like when you're using one. Um, this upper left screenshot here is a screenshot of Telex, which is a popular software that people use to connect to a bulletin board. You know, the screen shown here is the screen that it displayed to interact with the modem, give it commands and dial out and such. And on the upper right is what they call the phone book in Telex. This phone book contained lists of bulletin boards that you called frequently. So if you wanted to dial a bulletin board, you'd bring this up and then choose one, and then it would dial the modem and connect. Um, at the lower left screenshot here is it shows downloading a file from a bulletin board using Telex. So if you're transferring files, that's what it would typically look like. And the lower right is a screenshot of Legend of the Red Dragon, which is a popular online game people played on bulletin boards. So that's what those look like. Now, I think it's interesting to compare the, you know, the environment or how things were today compared to back then, because I think it's relevant and it has a lot to do with internet versus bulletin boards. Now, today, everybody uses the internet. And the internet is big and worldwide, so it's this big online community. It's all public. It's everywhere. Whereas bulletin boards in the 80s and 90s were typically small systems that were that people dialed locally. Because most of the users on a bulletin board were in the same city because people didn't want to have long-distance phone charges. So the community on a bulletin board were all people that were local. And some bulletin boards would even have meetups to let the you know, the users of the bulletin board meet in person. And sometimes they'd have, you know, games and go to a restaurant or whatever. Uh, or even at someone's house, they would meet up and just have hang out and have fun. Um, another difference is that today, pretty much everybody has a computer of some sort, whether it be a desktop computer or cell phone or tablet or something. So everybody's always connected today. Whereas back then, home computers and personal computer devices were were still fairly new and even unknown to some people. So there were a lot of people that just didn't have a use for a computer, and then people who did use computers were you know, hobbyists or just people who were interested in technology and could see what they could be used for. Uh, there are also mainly businesses that used computers back then, not so much people at home. So the environment back then was you know, computers are more of a hobbyist thing. So people were doing this online thing as mainly as a hobby and just to have fun. They might be wondering what a bulletin board looks like on the system it's running on. So, if someone wants to start a bulletin board, they would typically download a BBS software package and set it up on their computer and let it run. Now, this is a screenshot here of a, a typical bulletin board program. I apologize that it's blurry, it just 
that's mainly because it's low resolution, but when a bulletin board software was running, that's what it would typically look like. It would have a window that shows the status if someone was online or not, and um, the system it's running on, um, and some other status about the system. So that's this particular screenshot is for a software pa a package called Remote Access, which was one of the more popular bulletin board software packages back in the late 80s and mid 90s. Um, now, bulletin board softwares and bulletin boards actually still exist today. You can, you can set one up and run one, uh, even on Windows, Linux, and Mac. Um, and those bulletin boards typically operate on the internet via a protocol called Telnet. So here I have a screenshot of a bulletin board software called Synchronet running within Windows. This is so this is a status screen showing and waiting for connections. And then the, the Synchronet software also has other servers like Mail, FTP, Telnet, um, and others. So if you're running Synchronet for a bulletin board, this is what the Synchronet software looks like when it's waiting for connections. So now I wanted to give a demo of what a bulletin board looks like when you're using one. So I'll use this program called Netrunner. This is a, a Telnet bulletin board connection software. So th this connects to bulletin boards using Telnet online. So I'm going to bring up the phone book here, and I'm going to connect to my bulletin board and log in. So now I'm connected. Now I'm presented with this login screen. So this has options such as creating a new user account, using the guest account, emailing me, or logging in with an existing account. So I'm going to log in with my account here, enter my username and password. Okay, so now I'm logged in. And my bulletin board displays this deep thought, which is from Saturday Night Live. And every day my board chooses a new one of these. And then it asks me if you want to see the news. I'll skip that. Now these are some bulletins that I have here, which has things like you know, game scores and other news that I might choose to put up here. And I'm going to continue, and it shows the last some people who called. And um, another thing is, is bulletin boards are menu-driven, so it shows you a menu, and you have to choose an option from the menu to do something. So this is my main menu. It has options such as going to email, checking um, statistics, choosing user preferences, um, other miscellaneous things like checking bulletins and news and callers, and I have some of the games on here too. And then there are other commands such as navigating to other menus and things like that. So, um, <coughs> for example, if you wanted to read messages, you can navigate to the message menu, and on here there are options for moving to different message areas and uh, reading messages and that kind of thing. So I'm going to choose a message area here. Uh, I'll choose a, choose a local one, general messages. So now I'm going to read the you know, list of messages here. Now these are public messages that people have posted. If you want to read one, you can scroll through and choose one. And then you can read it and you can reply to it. And then other people can read your reply and re reply to that if they want. So it's just an interesting way to be social with people, to go post and talk about different random things. So that's that. Um, now there are also files on bulletin boards too, so I'm going to go to my file menu and bulletin boards typically have different areas where people are, can upload and download files. So I'm going to choose a category here for files, let's say Windows Software and then let's say Windows Games. So I'm going to list the files in here. So this is a listing of files you can download. So you can just choose any one of these and download it and then there you go. This is a popular way to distribute games and other software and files back then. There used to be a, a concept known as shareware, which was um, created for software that people wanted to sell, but with the idea that people would, would share the software and use it for a little bit with the hopes that people would eventually decide to buy it. And that kind of software was originally distributed on bulletin boards. And some of that software is now distributed on the internet. Um, so that's pretty much uh, what a bulletin board looks like. So I'm going to log off here. So now I've disconnected. So um, as far as other resources, if you want to learn more about bulletin boards, you can go to this Wikipedia link for bulletin board systems. And this shows you what a bulletin board was and how they started. It's a pretty informative link. There's also a very good documentary created by someone named Jason Scott. It's available on DVD you can buy called BBS The Documentary. And what he did was he went out and interviewed a whole bunch of people about their experiences using bulletin boards back in the 80s and 90s. And 
and put together this series of DVDs of interviews that he did. And this talks about mainly the user experience of interacting with other users on bulletin board systems. And it's very informative about how bulletin boards used to be and the type of environment that it was, the type of computers people used, and that kind of thing. It's, so I encourage you to go you know, to go view that if you're interested in learning more about bulletin boards. So, yeah, that's what bulletin boards were. Thanks for watching.